Chris here from The Nail Hub, and I caught myself today. I was just about to fix this, and I said, I'm going to stop, and I'm going to make a video about this, because I know this is going to happen to you at some point. I caught my nail doing something, and upward motion basically tore off a portion of the gel. It basically cracked all the way across, and then it ended up just kind of peeling and, and falling off here, and I helped it out a little bit. So I've got this situation where I still have gel that's pretty well adhered. I've got one teeny spot of lifting back here, but I've got gel that's really still well adhered to my nail, except for this front portion where, you know, maybe I don't want to take everything off or maybe I'm not ready to backfill my nails yet. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm getting over a cold that I had for the last couple of weeks, so I might have a, a kind of a scratchy voice for you. Um, but I have this situation where I've just got this this peeled area, this cracked area that I could actually fix. And I wanted to show you guys how to fix this without having to take everything off. So first things first, we need to uh, clean this nail and make sure that we get as much of the dirt and debris that might have gotten up into these broken areas out. We need to push back the cuticle, get everything prepped and ready to go. And then I'll show you guys how I also make sure that any line that's here disappears and we have a nice clear nail again. All right, so I am going to take a wipe and some of my cleanser. You can literally just use straight isopropyl alcohol if you want to. And if you haven't watched my video on how to make gel cleanser, I recommend you do because I show a nifty trick to um, mix some IPA and some acetone to really make a good dehydrator for your nail. So just clean off the surface of your nail before we do anything else and make sure you really saturate that area that's been exposed and we'll watch that dry. And then you're gonna take a nail file and um, you can also do this with an e-file. So if you have an e-file, grab one of your either like medium grit diamond bands or, um, or bits, or you can also use literally just a sanding band with a mandrel. This is a, this is a typical sanding band bit. So you can use one of these if you want to. Um, but I'm just going to show you guys the manual way to do it with a nail file. So let me just zoom out a little bit. So I'm using a hundred, um, 180 grit file. This is the hundred grit side. This is the 180 grit side. And the thing that we want to focus on here as we prep this and as we remove this kind of lifted area and any of this on the serration is we want to minimize the amount of filing that we do on this exposed area of our natural nail. So obviously this part of our nail not only has been filed during application, um, maybe even multiple times, depending on how often you've removed your gel, right? Because this part of our, this part of our nail used to be back here at some point. So depending on how many times you've manipulated this portion of your nail as it's grown out, plus the fact that the gel broke and peeled away and probably took some layers with it, this part of your nail is now thinner than when it originally grew out from your matrix back here in your finger. So we wanna keep that in mind. That's why we wanna avoid continuing to file and buff this part of our nail because it's just gonna thin it out even more, okay? So the trick here is when we file this, and I'll just turn this to the side, when we file this, we want to be very careful that we are keeping our file. Let me see if I can get my thumb out of there for you. Okay, so we wanna keep the file from rubbing on our natural nut. Can you see how even if I just rest it on the gel, I've got a space in between the file and my natural nail. I'm just filing on the gel. That's what you want to do. So if you start seeing a bunch of scratches on your natural nail as you're doing this, that means that you are filing on your natural nail too much and really, you can even, you know, just like you're seeing right here on camera, put this up close to your face for the first few strokes that you do just to make sure that you're actually filing on gel and you're not filing on your natural nail, okay? So you can use either side that you want depending on, you know, what your comfort level is, but I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna rest it on the gel and I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna file the gel down. And what we do is we file before the lifting. So if you can see, I'm filing on the gel right here before the lifted part. If I keep filing on the gel before the lifted part, this little yellowy opaque lifted area where it's still broken is gonna pop right off. I might end up thinning this other product as well, but the lifting will pop off on its own. So just keep that rested on the gel. And it's a good idea to also, um, I usually file either like back and forth like this, 
don't file up into the lifting because what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up pushing a bunch of dust up underneath there. You either wanna file with the lifting, like down towards it so that it comes off, or file perpendicular to it so that it just basically starts filing that off and I can start to see that that's thinning out. Just don't do upward strokes up into the lifting because like I said, it is going to make it worse. It'll catch it and lift it up more. And then also what will happen is um, you'll push dirt in there. I also do not recommend, do not recommend trying to get nippers or clippers or anything underneath this and to clip it off. I know that that's very tempting when you're dealing with lifting. If it was a ton of lifting and I actually could get some of it off that way, I would. But the challenge with trying to get a tool up underneath there to clip that off is that you're going to end up prying a lot of the gel up as well. Whether it's acrylic gel, whatever it might be, you're going to end up prying it upwards more than actually getting rid of it. So don't try to pry it up with tools and nip it off to save yourself time. You're going to end up causing a problem with that. If you do have a ton of lifting, what you can do is you can, with caution, whether you're using a bit or you're you're using a hand file, what you can do is you can actually increase the angle of your file and almost create like a, a perforation or a separation, like a line across like right before the lifting. So like, let's say this was lifted all the way up to here and I had a big flap of gel that's no longer attached. What you can do is you can basically kind of cut through the gel right before it and then the rest of the big chunk will fall off. So yes, you can do that. Just be very cognizant that if you're, you know, kind of digging in like that, you want to make sure you're not digging into your natural nail once you get through that product. So just do it very carefully and watch what you're doing, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna file this. And again, keep it, you know, kind of, I'm almost angling it back towards my finger so that I don't file too much on my natural nail. If you do a little bit, it's okay. It's not going to kill you. But like I said, we just wanna be cognizant of that because the more that we file that natural nail, you know, the more damage we're doing it to it and we just wanna keep it as healthy as possible. Okay, so just file with the gel a little bit here. And then <clears throat> I usually like to take off lifting and just assess where I am before I, you know, prep everything and go back. But you can absolutely do, you know, like push back the cuticle and do all of this in one step if you want to. So I'm just going to do a little bit more here. I'm doing this with my opposite hand, so it is a little bit awkward for me because I'm right-handed. So there we go. Okay, perfect. So let me just wipe this off so you guys can see. All right. So there. So I filed off the little bit of lifting that was there. I tried to maintain my natural nail as much as possible without, you know, really going after it because, again, we don't want to thin it out any more than it already is. And you can see also that instead of that lip that I had before, it's actually kind of now blended back into my natural nail. That's exactly what you want to see. You want to see like no more big, heavy, lifted line. And it kind of almost ends up like blending back. Over there, you can see I've got like a lip right there, that dark gray part. But that's okay. It's still attached to my finger and no problem there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push back my cuticle so that I can gently prep back here because we're gonna put gel over the entire nail. And if you have color on, um, you can absolutely patch just this area. If you have color on, you're gonna do the exact same thing. I would recommend that you leave most of the color. You're gonna end up scratching your top coat. That's totally fine. Um, but if you have color on your nail, um, go ahead and just same thing, you're gonna file right before the lifting, get rid of the lifting, and then basically what you're gonna do is you're just gonna butt everything up against that, that layer, do one more coat of color over the entire surface, do your top coat over the entire surface, and you'll end up melding it all together. Since I don't have color on, I'm just gonna push back my cuticle, and again, you can do this as well if you wanna just lightly file the part back towards the cuticle. There's nothing wrong with putting more base and more color and more top coat on top of a nail um, that you already have done. No, it's not gonna hurt it or anything. It'll make it a little bit thicker um, than you probably anticipated, but it's not gonna hurt anything, okay? So now that I've got that pushed back and cleansed, I'm just gonna take off this one little part back here. I'm gonna use the 180 grit to just take off that little tiny bit of lifting I had and a little bit of shine on the gel. And I'm gonna also just very gently prep my natural nail by removing the shine. 
just kind of etching it just a teeny bit. And you can also do this. I always show people this too. You can also like push back with your um, nail file to kind of push back your cuticle and it'll end up kind of scratching your natural nail and etching it a little bit too for product application, which is great. It almost works like a, like a stone. Um, like if you've ever seen like those cuticle stone pushers, it kind of works like that too. Okay, get back on camera here. All right, just like that, perfect. Okay, so let me cleanse this one more time. Make sure we get all the dust and debris and bacteria out of there. Let your nail dry completely before you move on to anything else. So just let it air dry. Don't touch the surface. Don't blow on it with your mouth because our mouths have a ton of bacteria in them. And even just blowing on it, you can actually transfer bacteria to your nails. So just let it air dry. And there we have a perfect prepped surface for more gel application. And we still have that original gel on there. And you guys have heard me talk a lot about how gel kind of gives almost a, um, a milky opacity to your nail. And you guys can absolutely see that here. You can see that my natural nail has more of a stark pink tone. And depending on your skin color, you're going to see, you know, a different kind of, you might have a peachier or more of a brown or more of a red or whatever. Everybody's skin and fingers are different. Um, and each one of our nail plates is different as well. So you're going to, you're going to have your own natural nail color that you start to recognize. Um, but you can see that when I put product on, whether it's gel or acrylic or even poly gel, it'll add this kind of milky look to it. And so that's how I differentiate between what's natural nail and what's product. And I, I try to keep those things separate when I'm, when I'm filing, prepping and applying product. Okay. So in order to make this a seamless transition between the old product and the new, you're going to want to use a, uh, um, a bonder of some kind. And I like the low acid bonders, um, like the protein bonds um, and the acid free bonders and stuff like that, or low acid bonders. So I've got a couple options here. So this is Luminary Primer in Commit. This is one of those kind of tacky non acid primers. Um, I've got Light Elegance Tac. Or you could also use something like Accents Affix It. Or again, you could use like a protein bond, whatever. I am going to use um, Jimmy Gel, Light Elegance Jimmy Gel to fix my nail. So because I'm using Light Elegance, I'm going to use the Light Elegance Bonder to go with it. But you can absolutely use any of those similar type of bonding agents underneath. And what that's going to do is it's going to really help um, erase that line. So I'm just going to take a little bit of Bonder. And you can put this over your entire nail too, depending on what you're putting on. Like if you're putting a different product over this or you're fixing a client's nail and you don't know what they have on there, um, feel free to put the bonder all over the nail surface. But what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna push the bristles of my brush right up against that line to try and get the bonder to go underneath any little microscopic lifting that's still there. And then I'm going to just apply a really nice sparing coat over the entire surface, all the way up onto my natural nail and all the way down onto the free edge of my nail. Use it very, very sparingly and just kind of spread it around like that, okay? So you should still be able to see that texture peeking through. It's not gonna look perfectly smooth right now. We want it to look like this because that tells us that we've just put a tiny amount on. And TAC actually, the Elegance TAC can actually be cured in your UV lamp or LED UV lamp. Um, in order to create extra adhesion, it actually has a UV cured portion in the formula. So I'm going to cure that really quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so I finished curing the tack. Now I'm ready to go in with my gel application. So I am going to create my slip layer and or I like to call it wetting layer where I'm just going to apply a nice thin coating of the gel first. This just helps me with getting the other gel that I'm gonna to apply to self-level a little bit better. And this is extra fun because I'm doing this with my left hand, so hopefully I do a good job here. I'm telling you, even after years of doing both of my hands, I swear I'm still not as confident with my left hand. Okay, so there's my wet layer. 
And then I'm going to go back with my dollop of gel. And then I'm just going to apply a little bit more here. I'm going to float it over. And because I have that wet layer of gel and I haven't cured anything, it'll just self-level into itself, which means self-leveling. And it'll make your life really easy. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is just let this sit for a second. Watch for that reflection. Again, you can turn your finger upside down if you want to. If you need to add a little bit more, like I check from the side usually and just see like, hey, do I need to add more product? Yes, I absolutely do. I need to add a little bit more right here. You can just add a little dollop and just plop it down and let it self-level. This is probably the most fascinating part of gel for me is that it really is so easy. Once you master what it does and you understand how it behaves, it's so easy to get the product to do what you want it to do. I just love gel for that reason. Okay, and if you wanna build it up a little bit more and you can, I'm gonna end up putting glitter gel and top coat on this and so I'm gonna leave my nail relatively thin because I still have a lot of product to go. But I'm going to just turn this upside down for a second just to get it kind of self-level in the middle. Make sure you point the center of your apex and the center of your nail, looking at it like if it had a mohawk on it. You really want to get it centered and then let it self-level like that. And then I'm going to cure this in my lamp. Okay, so there we have the finished product. I'm going to zoom in a lot so we can discuss just the lifting portion of it that we've taken care of that. So can you see that literally I've took care of all of the lifting it just blends seamlessly into the old gel. Obviously the old gel is thicker, a little bit thicker and older than the new stuff. So this is gonna end up looking more transparent than this. However, this will actually over probably the next 12 hours or so, it'll start to get a little bit more opaque looking um, and it will start to blend more. And you have to also take into consideration that since I ripped off this portion of my nail hair, by you know accident and uh, ripped off the gel as a result you are going to have a little bit more redness and or darker nail plate tone because this part of your nail is thinner than this part and that means that more of your nail bed is going to be able to show through because it's showing through a thinner surface so just keep that in mind but honestly it's a very easy way to camouflage this and most of the time when this happens you do have color on and like i said you're gonna just fill in, you know, the, if you guys want me to show you next time with color on, I can absolutely do that. Um, but basically you're gonna do everything I did, except for you're gonna butt most of the clear gel up against the old without going over the entire surface. Then you're gonna use your color to camouflage across both. And then you're gonna use your top coat as the final result to be able to seal everything together and make it more uniform. But there you have it, an easy way to fix any gel that's peeled up without having to take everything off because our goal here is not to continue to retouch any portion of the nail that doesn't need to be retouched. We can just fix portions that have fallen off, cracked off, peeled off, whatever the case might be. All right, hope that helps guys. I'll be in touch next time with another great video. Bye.